Free term birth is the most important single determinant of adverse infant outcome. In terms of both survival and quality of life, although free term birth is defined as being before 37 completed weeks, most mortality and morbidity is experienced by babies born before 34 weeks. Prevention and treatment of preterm labor is important as a means of reducing adverse events for the child. Tocolytics, which are also known as anti-contraction medications, are agents that have been widely used in the treatment of premature labor. Most commonly used tocolytics are magnesium sulfate, calcium channel blockers like nifedipine, beta-2 agonists like terbutaline, and NSAIDs like indomethacin. Tocolytics prolong pregnancy for up to 7 days but do not improve fetal morbidity or mortality. However, they provide a limited time for treatment with a corticosteroid to enhance lung maturation of newborn baby or for transfer of the mother to a specialist unit. When a tocolytic drug is indicated, then nifedipine is preferred since it has fewer unwanted effects on the mother than a beta-2 agonist. Nifedipine has the advantage of oral administration. Dear viewers, now I am going to discuss the mechanism of action of tocolytics. So when tocolytics are administered, they cause smooth muscle relaxation in the uterus by various mechanisms. Both magnesium sulfate and calcium channel blockers block calcium channels which inhibits the entry of calcium ions into uterine smooth muscles and thus decreases their contractility. In addition to its tocolytic effect, magnesium sulfate also has a neuroprotective effect on the preterm brain which is more susceptible to injury. Beta-2 agonists bind to the beta-2 receptors located on the surface of smooth muscle cells ultimately leading to a decrease in the level of intracellular calcium and decreasing their contractility. Finally, NSAIDs inhibit the enzyme cyclooxygenase, which normally helps to produce prostaglandins. As a result, there is a decrease in prostaglandin levels, which ultimately results in relaxation of the uterine smooth muscles. Let us now discuss the side effects of tocolytics. Tocolytics can cause several maternal and fetal side effects. Tocolytic therapy with magnesium sulfate is known to affect calcium homeostasis and result in hypocalcemia and hypercalciuria. In addition, magnesium sulfate toxicity can lead to respiratory depression, cardiac arrest as well as neurological side effects like altered mental status, reduced deep tendon reflexes and muscle weakness. Calcium channel blockers can cause vascular smooth muscle relaxation which may result in headache, dizziness, flushing, nausea and hypertension which could decrease blood flow to the fetus. The good news is that calcium channel blockers don't seem to cause side effects on the fetus. For beta-2 agonists, side effects result from the excessive stimulation of beta-2 receptors elsewhere in the body. In heart, beta-2 agonists can cause tachycardia, arrhythmias, and palpitations, whereas in vascular smooth muscles, they can lead to hypotension. Other side effects include tremors, nervousness, hyperglycemia, hypokalemia, and the development of pulmonary edema. In addition, beta-2 agonists can cross the placenta to the fetus, so another side effect is fetal tachycardia. Terbutaline should not be administered if the client has known cardiac disc disease or poorly controlled diabetes mellitus. Finally, Side effects of NSAIDs can result from the decreased levels of prostaglandins, making the gastric mucosa more susceptible to injury by gastric acid, which can lead to gastritis and gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now in regard to the fetus, NSAIDs can affect the fetal kidneys and that decreases the fetal production of urine. NSAIDs can also cause a premature closure of the ductus arteriosus, which is a small vessel that normally connects the fetal aorta to the pulmonary artery. Premature closure of the ductus arteriosus causes the blood to go directly to the fetal lungs, overwhelming them and resulting in pulmonary hypertension and heart failure. Lastly, we are going to discuss about the contraindications of tocolytics. 
Tocolytics are generally contraindicated if pregnancy continuation poses a risk on the client's life as in severe preeclampsia or eclampsia, intrauterine infection and active vaginal bleeding. Tocolytics are also contraindicated before the 20th week and after the 34th week of gestation as well as in clients with premature rupture of the membrane. In addition, there are also specific contraindications for each tocolytic medication. For example, magnesium sulfate is contraindicated in clients with myasthenia gravis. Magnesium sulfate should also be used with caution in clients with recent myocardial infection or those with renal disease as it is excreted by the kidneys. On the other hand, calcium channel blockers are contraindicated in clients who have hypotension. Next, beta-2 agonists should be avoided in clients who have cardiac disease or uncontrolled diabetes. Finally, NSAIDs are contraindicated in clients with peptic ulcer disease, impaired renal function and bleeding disorders. NSAIDs are also contraindicated after 32 weeks of gestation when the risk of premature closure of ductus arteriosus is higher. So my dear viewers, that was all about the tocolytic agents and their role in preterm birth. I hope you find this video informative. Keep watching Pharmacy Day by Asim. Also, the link to our different social media accounts is given in the description below. Go and follow us there as well for more informative stuff. Keep watching Pharmacy Day by Asim. Thank you so much.